Hello everyone and welcome to optimization tutorials in Python. In these tutorials we provide real and applicable knowledge of optimization, control engineering, signal processing, applied mathematics and machine learning. In this particular tutorial I will teach you how to solve systems of nonlinear equations in Python by using the function f solve. The function fsolve is designed for solving square system of nonlinear equations. When I say a square system of nonlinear equations, I mean that the number of equations should be equal to the number of unknown variables. Here is a brief outline of what you will learn in this video tutorial. We will start from this particular system of nonlinear equations. Then I will explain you how to transform this system of nonlinear equations into the form that you can directly implement in Python. Here are the steps. You will have to do something like this. Then you will have to introduce new variables and you will have to substitute these variables in the original system in order to obtain this function over here. Once you have this function, I will explain you how to solve the system in Python. And here is the Python code. But before I start, I would like to mention a few important things. First of all, those of you who are my subscribers or who follow this channel know by now that I always create a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. And consequently, here is the post. This post contains all the equations, all the explanations together with Python codes. A link to this post is given in the description below. Secondly, it took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this post and this video that you are currently watching and consequently I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the function fsolve can be used for solving a square system of nonlinear equations. That is, the number of unknown variables has to be equal to the number of equations in the system. According to the documentation page for fsolve, and this documentation page can be accessed by clicking over here, you can learn that actually this function is a simple wrapper for another function and for another code implemented in Fortran 90. That is, fsolve function is a wrapper for the hybrid Powell method that's implemented in the Fortran 90 library MinPack. And you can learn more about this library if you read this documentation page. Another thing to keep in mind while watching this video is that in this video I will explain you how to solve systems of nonlinear equations without specifying the Jacobian matrix of the system. That is, you will just specify the equations and Python will do all the approximations. In my next video I will explain you how to specify the Jacobian matrix. Okay, let's start. To explain you how to solve systems of nonlinear equations, I constructed a simple square system. The unknowns in this system are x, y, z, and these are the three equations. Obviously, the solution of this system is the following. x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2, and z is equal to 3. However, there is also another solution of this system and Python was able to find this another solution. The first step is to transform this system. We will transform the system by taking these constants from the right hand side and by moving them to the left hand side of the equations. Let's do that. The first equation is then 2x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 15 is equal to 0. 
The second equation is x plus y plus 2z minus 9 is equal to 0. And the third equation is x times y times z minus 6 is equal to 0. Okay, this was the first step. The second step is to introduce new variables. I will introduce a vector w with the entries w0, w1, and w2, where w0, w1, and w2 are real scalars. Then, I will perform the following substitution. I will say that w0 is equal to x, w1 is equal to y, and w2 is equal to z. Let us stop here for a second. Note here that I'm starting the index of w variables from 0. I'm doing that in order to be consistent with the Python notation, because we know that in Python, arrays and vectors start from 0. That is, the indices start from 0. Okay, the next step is to substitute w0, w1, and w2 in our original system. That is, we substitute them over here. So let's see what happens if we substitute. We obtain 2 w0 squared plus w1 squared plus w2 squared minus 15 is equal to 0. The second equation is w0 plus w1 plus 2w2 minus 9 is equal to 0. And the third equation is w0 times w1 times w2 minus 6 is equal to 0. We can formally write this system with three equations in three unknowns w0, w1, and w2 in the vector, or better to say, vector matrix form. The system can be compactly written as follow. follows. f of w is equal to 0, where f in now is a vector function. And the entries of this vector function are f0, f1, and f2. This part over here, let me just change the color, is f0. This part over here, better to say, the left-hand side of the second equation is f1. And the left-hand side of the third equation is f2. In this way, we have transformed our original system of nonlinear equations in the vector form given over here that Python can understand and that we can implement in Python. Now we are ready to implement the solution in Python. Over here is my Python code. As you can observe, I'm using the spider environment and spider environment is very useful. It comes with anaconda environment. The first step is to import the necessary libraries. I'm importing the NumPy library and from scipy.optimize, I'm importing fsolve. The next step is to define our nonlinear equation, w, f of w, better to say. That is, I need to define this function in Python. I need to define the function f of w. This function will accept a vector w and it will return the value of f. If w is equal to the solution of the problem, then f of w will be equal to 0. If w is not the, solu if w is not the solution of the problem, f of w will not be equal to 0. 
So here is the implementation of my f function in Python. First, I specify f as a numpy array of zeros. Then I specify the first entry. The first entry given over here is actually this function over here. 2 omega 0 squared plus omega 1 squared plus omega 2 squared minus 15. And that's exactly what you can see over here. F1 is given over here. This is F1. W0 plus W1 plus W2, W2 minus 9. And this is exactly what you're seeing over here. And this is F of 2. Here it is. And here's the analytical form. Finally, I just need to return the value of f. Next, I need to generate an initial guess of my solution. To remind you, f solve actually uses an iterative method for solving the system of nonlinear equations. Consequently, we need to initialize this iterative method. If you have a good guess of the solution, you can actually use that guess. However, here I'm just assuming a random initial guess. And finally, once we define the initial guess, we can solve the problem. We call the function fsolve. The first argument of this function is our nonlinear equation, that is f of w. The second argument, better to say, the second input argument is the initial guess. And the third parameter that you can see over here is actually saying that I want to generate a full output. That is, I want to generate a tuple of several variables. The first variable will be our solution, and the second variable will be a dictionary giving some additional information about our solution. Okay. So let's do these steps. Here I will erase my workspace since I want to start with, a, with an empty workspace. I will clear this part over here and let's execute everything until here. Okay, here it is. If you print this return value, that is the tuple, solution info, you will obtain something like this. So here's the solution, one, two, three, and that's exactly the solution that we know up front. And here's the initial guess. So we start from this initial guess and we actually compute the solution. We compute the solution by using 26 function evaluations. That is this parameter and FEV gives you the number of evaluations of this function while computing the solution. These are the other parameters that are not important for the time being and this parameter over here is very important. This parameter is actually the value of our function f of w for this computed solution. So if we substitute the solution in this equation, that is the approximate solution, we will obtain these values for f0, f1, and f2. And we can see that these are very small values, meaning that our solver was actually able to find the approximate solution. Okay, we can extract this solution by simply extracting the first entry of the solution info tuple. Here it is. So let's see the solution. Here it is. Perfect. So let us then manually compute the residual. The residual, again, is the value of this function at the computed solution. So let's do that. And let's see the residual. Okay, so here is the residual. Again, the residual was also available in this dictionary over here. It's actually given over here, so you can see that the numbers are equal. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.